Mm. According to my invisible clock, it looks like it's that time again. If you're new to the channel or you missed last year's football season, you're in for one hell of a ride. Ladies and gentlemen, as it is August, it is now time to do the official football previews. Those are the things that kicked off my uh, YouTube channel last year. And this is the AFC East preview. We're going to preview the AFC East, every position, every strength and weakness of all four teams in the AFC East. The Buffalo Bills, obviously the strongest team in the AFC East as of right now. No weaknesses. The Patriots adding Cam Newton, but still have a lot of other questions around the team. The Dolphins rebuilt, but it's too soon or too little too soon. Tua potentially could be the week one starter, but it's looking more like Ryan Fitzpatrick. And of course, yours truly, the New York Jets. This is your AFC East 2020 NFL preview. Hit the like button, subscribe, go nowhere else. Oh man, it feels like it's in the air. The NFL season is coming back. The only question is, in the next couple of weeks, we're going to learn a lot about sports. We've already learned that baseball is already just as easy as it began getting ready to shut down. What do I mean by that? The Marlins outbreak, a couple of the Phillies players, a couple of the Cardinals, Mr. Manfred of the MLB said that if there is more or another outbreak similar to the Marlins, Away with the baseball season we go. Anyways, we're talking about football here, and hopefully there is football, because if there is not football, I'm going to lose my mind. We're going to talk about the AFC East. To those of you that have not seen these kind of videos before, we started off our YouTube channel last year previewing each and every division. We go through each and every division, uh, video by video, leading up to the NFL season, and I don't know if the last division that I preview is going to be in line with the NFL season, but I figured since it's August, there's eight divisions to preview, and there's a hell of a lot of work that goes into these videos. Uh, notes, videos, pictures, editing, hashtags, all of that. I mean, that's a typical video, but for with these videos, it's a little bit more because there are fans here that will that know the team better than I do. I know a lot about football and sports, but there are teams or people that know their teams better. And if I say the wrong thing, well, they're going to let me know about it because it's happened before in the NBA in the comments. So what is this? This is... The AFC East preview and predictions. We're going to talk about the Buffalo Bills. This team right here is the strongest in the division on paper. This team started their rebuild from defense, and now all of a sudden their offense looks very, very good. The Buffalo Bills are a team where a lot of people will get scared when they hear the word 12-4, and four, or they hear the saying 12-4, and four. but in all honesty, if Josh Allen performs to that level, Stephon Diggs is anything that we've seen, and the defense continues to ball, this is a Buffalo Bills team that, to be honest, wouldn't surprise me to see it in that situation. The New England Patriots are finding themselves for the first time without Tom Brady. Cam Newton comes aboard. Cam Newton was a free agent for a long time, and it was a team that needed a desperate, or excuse me, a team that desperately needed a quarterback was the New England Patriots, and they signed Cam Newton. The only problem is, is that the Patriots don't have the weapons that they maybe once had. Edelman is still on board, but there are questions with their receiving core. Um, the Miami Dolphins begun a rebuild. But again, this team had such a tough year last year, and there's so many things I'm going to address in this video. Um, it's hard to see them really having any type of a good year. Um, and then, of course, the New York Jets. The New York Jets are similar to the Knicks and their ways of disaster. The first team we're going to talk about is the team I see winning the division, and that's the Buffalo Bills. Now, we went over just about a minute ago how strong this team's defense was. We went over how strong their defense was, some of the offense additions that they've made. The first thing we're going to talk about is that the fact that the team has almost no weaknesses. Every position for this Buffalo Bills team is loaded with talent. Uh, there are some question marks in certain situations, but one of the first things we're going to talk about, and we're going to go in order here, is the quarterback. Now, Josh Allen stepped up a lot last year. And he has a lot more receivers to work with this season, adding Stephon Diggs, but he needs to work on deep ball accuracy. Um, now, one of the disadvantages of this is that I don't know how much, if any at all, there's been any type of training that the players have had with another player. Um, again, that's that's one of the things, you know, they canceled all the preseason for the NFL. Um, you know, he's going to have to work on his deep ball accuracy. Why? Because Stephon Diggs is here. Now you have a receiver that you know is capable of taking a deep ball to the house. Josh Allen needs to work on that. As well, the team has the backup of Matt Barkley as their backup quarterback, and they also drafted a quarterback, Jake Frum, in the event that Allen underperforms, which I don't see happening, or the event that Allen is injured, which would not be very good for them. Running backs, Devin Singletary is a solid back. We know what he's like. We know how good he is for those of you that know the Buffalo Bills. The only problem is, is that last year his workload was a question mark. So what the team did is they drafted Zach Moss in the third round. They also have TJ Yelton as a third string running back, but he can't seem to hang on to the football. 
Um, that's from what I'm told. They're saying that Devin Singletary could run the ball a lot more this year for Buffalo. And I think that that's one of the things that they're probably going to be looking for. Um, obviously, Zach Moss will probably get some 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 in and outs here. But the idea is to have Devin Singletary be the, the ideal running back because he is a good running back and he brings a lot to the run game of Buffalo. Now, the receivers, Stephon Diggs joins a receiving core that was already pretty decent. Uh, he joins Cole Beasley, John Brown, who's a solid, um, and Knox and Croft will split the tight end duties as well. But Stephon Diggs is obviously the big name that rubs everybody there when you talk about wide receivers. Um, I would look for the Buffalo Bills to put up a lot of points this year. Um, again, this was a team last year that was built around good offense, but very, very good defense. Um, but we're going to see a, a, a team that strengthen their offense. I think the Buffalo Bills are going to honestly be not just in the AFC East, but they're going to be one of the hardest teams to get a win against, against uh, just in general. I've been having on my, my eye on this Buffalo Bills team for a while, and I think in all honesty that they, they're going to be something that you really need to watch. Um, it gets even scarier when we get to the defense, but we're talking about the offensive line, right? The quarterback needs his protection. All five of their starters, Spain, Ford, Dawkins, Morse, and Feliciano, return. The offensive line is returning 100% from last season, so obviously the chemistry will be there. This team's offense is going to be fun to watch this year. Obviously, Stefan Diggs, the addition of him, and a lot of other guys. Um, now let's talk about the defense. There was a lot of changes on the defensive line in terms of the pass rush for the Buffalo Bills. Uh, they did sign Mario Addison, Vernon Butler as well, and Quentin Jefferson. They're hoping for progress from second-year player Ed Oliver. Ed Oliver showed flashes of brilliance last year as a pass rusher for the Buffalo Bills. But again, they're going to look to see uh, what... Oh, excuse me. Everything's falling down here. But again, they're going to look to see what kind of progress he can make. This Bills pass rush is not some, uh, something you really want to mess with. Speaking of something else, we have a lot of different changes in the linebacker, or excuse me, the linebacking core from the Buffalo Bills. First things first, they have Tremont Edmonds, Matt Milano. Those are the key points around linebackers. They also uh, noticed that Lorenzo Alexander retired. His, his replacement is A.J. Klein, who will be taking over as a linebacker for him. Uh, the linebacking duties are going to be a bit of a question mark. There's a bit of replacements and different things that have happened uh, for the Bills as linebacking core. But here's where we get to the no-fly zone. The no-fly zone is the secondary. Now, we talk about a secondary that's elite and strong. One of the things you have to look at right away is the Buffalo Bills. Tredavious White is one of the best players in the league in the secondary. Um, and the safety duo is probably the, safe, the, the best safety duo in the NFL, and that's Micah Hyde and, jo Micah Hyde, excuse me, and Jordan Poyer. If you're looking for, to throw deep against the Buffalo Bills, good luck. Those are your safeties. And now, one of the key additions for the secondary of the Buffalo Bills is Norman. The team signed Josh Norman. And one of the things I want to talk about with Josh Norman is the idea here that he was the best corner in the league on Washington. He went, or excuse me, in Carolina. He went to Washington, and he had a tough time. Josh Norman now joins a team that's very friendly to secondary, and I think if Josh Norman is going to break out and be that player that he once was, he's going to find that success on this Buffalo Bills secondary. Special teams, they drafted a kicker, Tyler Brass, who's going to compete with Steven Hoska. Your Buffalo Bills should be your AFC East winners. Of, um, excuse me, your AFC East winners for 2020. New England. The question is, is it a good era? Well, here's what I say. I said in the offseason that the New England Patriots best idea was to sign Jacoby Brissett. A lot of people said Cam Newton. I understood why they said Cam Newton. But I think one of the reasons why Cam Newton became such a, 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 what's the word for it? Complicated signing is because the Patriots were trying to entertain other options. They weren't sure about Cam Newton's behavior, his health. Now, Cam Newton's health is definitely something that I think is, is not as bad as people say it is, but his behavior. Uh, when the Panthers started losing, Cam Newton came out. Uh, one of the first things he was very loud during their NFL season when they were absolutely annihilating the league for Von Miller to give him nightmares in the Super Bowl. Here's the problem. Cam Newton began to get frustrated. Some people said the Panthers did him dirty. He became a free agent. Why was Cam Newton not signed? Nobody knew. The Patriots took a chance on Cam Newton. We knew that the Patriots were not going to go into the season with, the back, with their quarterback being uh, Jared Stidham, okay? The Patriots knew better. I thought... Jacoby Brissett is a backup in Indianapolis. What are we waiting for? Why are we not signing Jacoby Brissett? Well, nobody knows. Where's Jacoby Brissett? Still a backup. 
Jacoby Brissett is a quarterback that is talented enough to start. He already knew the system in New England, so for some reason, he has not been signed. And if you think that Jacoby Brissett has a chance to start over Phillip Rivers, you have a few screws loose. The Patriots signed Cam Newton to be their quarterback. Behavior and health, all it comes down to. If there's any team that doesn't put up with nonsensical behavior, it is the New England Patriots, because we know that Cam, or excuse me, uh, Bill Belichick does not put up with any nonsense, and he will not put up with any nonsense against Mr. Cam Newton. If the Patriots start off 0-4, it's going to be interesting. I'm all for giving Cam Newton a chance. I'm all for Cam Newton on New England. Bill Belichick is very smart. This team does not have Tom Brady anymore, but we knew that the times of Tom Brady, honestly, I felt were coming to the end based on last season. Is Cam Newton going to be able to perform? I think so. But it's a supporting cast that's going to be the question mark. Running back. Patriots are one of the best teams at developing running backs. Sony Michelle should be splitting carries with James White and Rex Burkhead as well. A lot stays the same when the running category for the Patriots. I have no doubt that Sony Michelle will have a decent season and James White as well. The receivers. Now, here's where is probably the biggest question mark for me is the receiving core for the New England Patriots. Going into this season, Julian Edelman is the clear leader. Obviously, he's coming off of some kind of surgery, but Julian Edelman is a dog, and we know his his potential as a uh, as a leader and what he brings to the New England Patriots uh, receiving core. Mohamed Sanu was a great receiver in Atlanta. Then he came to New England, and he was hurt. He's coming off a year of health. Not good. Nikhil Harry has lots of potential. The tight end competition is between Matt Latos and Ryan Izzo, but despite that, the Patriots drafted two tight ends. So there's going to be a tight end battle going on to see who's going to be the tight end for the New England Patriots. But as far as the receiving core goes, there is potential there. Nikhil Harry as well. Mohamed Sanu, they need him healthy. And Edelman, they need him to continue to ball. Hopefully Edelman and Cam Newton will be a nice little competition. Uh, but we know Cam Newton's desire to throw the ball very deep. Most starters return for the offensive line, so hopefully Cam Newton will have some kind of protection. Isaiah Wynn and Shaq Mason are among those starters that return to the offensive line. The defensive line, the team signed Bew Allen, uh, Lawrence Guy, uh, Adam Butler, and Winovich. Uh, some of these players were on the team already, but that is the defensive line for your New England Patriots. Now, the linebacking core was pretty much, it seems like, it was destroyed for New England, um, at least had undergoing the most changes in the offseason. There are a lot of changes at linebacker. They lost Kyle Van Noy, who went to Miami, I believe. They lost Roberts as well. Collins. Hightower, the leader, returns. Now, when I took these notes, when I took these notes, one of the things that was not an occurrence yet was players opting out of the NFL season. Um, Dante Hightower opted out, so they do not have him. They drafted Josh Uch and Jennings. Bentley impressed coaches as well. Dante Hightower is not playing, so the linebacking core for the New England Patriots is going to be one that is, I think is going to honestly have a tough time uh, this coming season. And the secondary is probably the strongest part of the team. What can you say about Stephon Gilmore that hasn't been said already? Uh, Stephon Gilmore was the defensive player of the year last year and has quietly become one of the best corners. They have J.C. Jackson, Jason McCourty, Jones. Devin returns at safety. Patrick Chung also opted out. They did draft Kyle Duggar and signed Adrian Phillips from the Chargers. So there's some changes coming to the secondary. Uh, but obviously you have the ringleader of Stephon Gilmore, who is probably the best corner in the league as we speak. The team released uh, Stefan Goskowski and they drafted Justin Rosher. Special teams problems. New England Patriots. Some changes. If there's any team that does well against adversity, it's the New England Patriots. So I don't have that much of a worry about them this season. Uh, are they going to win the division? I do not see it over the Buffalo Bills, honestly. I think the Buffalo Bills are just stacked beyond stacked. And I don't think that um, they're going to have that, that type of success um, that we want. Now, for me, an ideal season for the for the New England Patriots with everything going on would be 10-6. and six. Um, Having Cam Newton definitely boosts their... Uh, chances of success that is really going to hurt new england's defense and new england's defense was one of the best in the league um, in terms of secondary last year the new england had a really good defense and towards the second half of the season it was new england's defense that was carrying them to success so really it's all going to depend on that the miami dolphins i think the miami dolphins were one of those teams last year that were ranked nearly dead last in every category and it absolutely showed my god my god there are some improvements that this Dolphins team made. Are they going to be as bad as last year? I don't think so. Are they going to be good? No. No. 
The first one is quarterback. The team drafted Tua to be their quarterback, and now one of the things I want to mention here is that Tua's coming off that injury. He recently, from what I was told the other day, passed his physical. But they're not sure if Tua's going to be ready to start come week one in about a month. I think, in all honesty, Ryan Fitzpatrick is their temporary starter. Ryan Fitzpatrick is not a bad quarterback. He's not a franchise quarterback, and he's made that known throughout the years that he's not a franchise quarterback. Um... But for me personally, I think that the season starts with Ryan Fitzpatrick, but I don't think it ends with him. If he gets hurt or they're ready for Tua, I think they're going to give Tua some some props. But if now if this Miami Dolphins team starts off 3-0, and you know, I think Ryan Fitzpatrick is their starter right now. And as soon as he makes a mistake and Tua's ready, they're going to put Tua right in the game. That's the same thing that the Cleveland Browns did uh, with Baker Mayfield. Running backs. This was probably the worst run game in all of the NFL. The team, are you ready for this, was led by, from what I know, Ryan Fitzpatrick was their lead rusher last year with 243 yards. I don't know if that's actually real, but despite that, midway through the season, Kenyon Drake was traded. The team then signed Jordan Howard to a two-year deal. He's coming off an injury, and Matt Breida also from San Francisco, since San Francisco has 45,000 running backs. The run game should be a lot better. Jordan Howard's coming off an injury, and Matt Breida as well. We know his talent, but he didn't get too much time to have it shine in San Francisco. Look, uh, Hopefully, the Dolphins' run game will be better receivers. The team did make improvement here. Um, Preston Parker, excuse Devontae Parker, is coming back after a, a, a great year. You know, and, and this Miami Dolphins' receiving core is not that bad. Uh, Preston Williams is, needs an injury bounce back. Wilson come back also. Grant also recover. Mike Jasicki was solid at tight end. There's a lot of injured receivers that are coming back this year. So I think that it's safe to say that you could see this receiving core be a little bit slow out of the gate, um, advising everything that did happen. Offensive line for the Miami Dolphins. The team traded Laramie Tunsil early last season. The team signed Ted Karras and Eric Flowers as well. Davenport, Davenport came in a trade. Their defensive line finished last in sacks last year. Uh, the team signed Shaq Lawson and Ogba as well, and Wilkins is returning. One of the bright spots could be upcoming this season is the linebacking core. Now, the linebacking core, they landed Kyle Van Noy and Roberts. Those are two players coming from New England who will have a chance to go against their teams and maybe get a sack on Cam Newton at some point this season. And the secondary is the team's strongest unit. And it's going to get a little bit stronger this year because the team signed Byron Jones from the Dallas Cowboys. He joins Xavier Howard and Fedgel Dem at safety. The special teams, Jason Sanders has a kicker and the punter is Matt Hack. The Miami Dolphins team is, has made a lot of transitions this offseason. There could be some bright flashes throughout the season, but I wouldn't expect too much if you're a Dolphins fan. In all honesty, I don't see it. Speaking of low expectations, they're the first thing to say when I talk about the New York Jets. Because I don't want to come off as a jackass, but the New York Jets are coming back for football again this year, as every team in the NFL does. What the New York Jets do on, on the football field is up to them. This team is coming off of a season where they should have been a lot better than they were. There's some changes coming off, and there's a lot that needs to improve, and there's a lot that needs to happen fast with the New York Jets. In my honest opinion, this team, personally, will not make the playoffs next year. They just want improvement. They want consistency. Sam Darnold should be fairly decent. I think Sam Darnold is, is, has potential to be a good quarterback needs to improve on the deep ball but part of that is is that the Jets despite losing Robbie Anderson didn't have too many playmakers so now this year the Jets are going to get some more, more names but Sam Darnold struggled last year because the team had a terrible offensive line they gave no run protection to Le'Veon Bell this team could be in for another rough year now also the team signed Joe Flacco as a backup but in my honest opinion I would not be shocked to see Joe Flacco start at some point this season for the New York Jets because in all honesty if the Jets start off 0-4 I think they're gonna put Joe Flacco away now the offensive line is still garbage but let me let me let me open your mind to something real quick do we remember oh I certainly do and you know sporting this jersey I do for you Titans fans out there whoever's listening how bad this Titans team performed in the first six weeks of the season with Mariota as the quarterback. Do we remember the light switch that was hit when Ryan Tannehill took over? I do. It led us all the way to the AFC Championship game. Okay. Not saying Joe Flacco's going to do that because he's not. 
but I wouldn't be shocked to see him start at some point during the year. Running backs, this is another one that needs massive improvement, and they need it fast. Le'Veon Bell was the best running back in the league on the Pittsburgh Steelers. He's coming off of an awful season. The offensive line couldn't create space if their life depended on it. The team signed Frank Gore, but the signing of Frank Gore is not so much to be a starter. I think it's to to nurture uh, Brandon Pe or excuse me, Perrine, who is a running back that the team also drafted um, this offseason for the New York Jets. Now, could Frank Gore start? Yeah, but there's no point. Le'Veon Bell should should could and will be your starting running back for most of the year but we he, they desperately need a run game because the Jets offense is going to have a lot of problems coming up this season in the situation that they're currently in part of those problems or some of them that might change is the Jets receiving core we're going to talk about some here they lost Robbie Anderson which was one of their better receivers they did sign Perryman Smith comes back and they drafted Denzel Mims now Denzel Mims is going to be a key point in this Jets receiving core we're talking about a guy that was drafted that has what a lot of people are saying are a lot of talent. So that's one positive for the New York Jets. They also signed Josh Dotson. Ryan Griffith, however, at tight end has shown that he has potential and heard none as a backup and also Daniel Brown as tight end. So their tight end position is pretty much locked with Ryan Griffith, who showed some flashes of brilliance last year. The offensive line was revamped completely, and it damn sure needed to be. Lewis signed Fant, McGovern, and they drafted Becton at the number 10 draft pick. I believe the Jets drafted him. The offensive line is going to be such a key point in the Jets' success this year. Let's talk about the defensive line. It was solid with Steve McClendon, Williams, and they drafted. Their defensive line couldn't be that bad. Their linebacking core had a bit of problems last year when C.J. Mosley went down early. They gave him a crap ton of money. However, they have Mosley. Hewitt, Williamson was hurt. Cashman and Jenkins comes back as linebackers. Secondary. The secondary is not that bad, but they did lose a key player this offseason. Poole returns. They signed Pierre Desir, Marcus May at safety. Marcus May will be at safety, excuse me, after Adams was traded to Seattle just a few weeks ago. Their special teams is Sam Ficken, and they drafted Brandon Mann as a punter. The New York Jets are going to have a very, very tough time this upcoming season, but there are some flashes of what could be potential for the New York Jets. But if you want my honest opinion, the Buffalo Bills win this AFC East division. And um, that's, that's pretty much where I go with that. Um, I appreciate everybody watching as always. I think the next preview that we're probably going to do on here is going to be the AFC North. Um, I already created uh, part of what I wanted to do with that for the AFC North. Um, I made, you know, I got to take the notes for it. But sometime next week we should get the AFC North. We're going to try to dive into some NBA and NHL. I know we got some news coming out. Uh, the NHL having their playoffs now. Thank you for everybody who's watching. Hit the like button, subscribe, go nowhere else.